Welcome in to the New Orleans Saints podcast, hosted by Aaron Summers and John DeShazer. You'll hear from players, coaches, broadcasters, and writers who cover the team on a daily basis. The New Orleans Saints podcast starts right now. Here's your hosts, Aaron Summers and John DeShazer. Welcome into the New Orleans Saints podcast. I'm Aaron Summers. The Saints are a game back from Atlanta for first in the NFC South. And with the Panthers in town this weekend, you could almost say this is a must win. Here's offensive lineman James Hurst on the importance of this one. Yeah, um, I definitely would agree with that. I mean, every game feels like, a, in a sense, a playoff game, right? It's not a lose and go home, but it's definitely, man, the importance of these games um, and the you know, losing streak that we've had right now. Uh, we have to come out of it. And yeah, it's a it's a huge division game. Division games count for you know one and a half or two games, however you uh, write that out. But uh, it's it's a huge game, and, and we know it's going to be a close one because you know, we played in week two, and it was a tight game, really the whole game. So uh, we know what kind of game it's going to be. It's going to be a physical, uh, gritty game, and it's going to be four quarters like like most NFL games are. Defensively, since week seven, the Saints have allowed 26 and a half points. To start the season, the Saints were only allowing 16 a game. In week two, the first matchup against the Panthers, the Saints held them to 17 points, had four sacks and a forced fumble. Linebacker Pete Werner said Thursday, it's about getting back to early season form for this week. Yeah, I, I think that we have to go back to the, the defense that we were the first uh, five weeks of the season, um, starting out fast and, and uh, really making an impact and uh, helping out our offense. I think the, the biggest key to victory this week is our ability to um, keep good field position. And I think as long as we have great field position, we're putting them in tough spots to start and putting our offense in great uh, positions. I think that'll be the key there. Uh, but just executing, playing with each other, playing complementary defense is what we need to get back to. For an insider's perspective on what's been going on with the Panthers, we have former Saints and Panthers quarterback Jake DeLome. He joins John DeShazer and myself now. Jake, thanks for joining us on the New Orleans Saints podcast. Familiar territory for a few years for you over here before you headed over to the Panthers where you are now calling games. But how are things going for you this season? Well, things are going great for me. I, I love NFL football and um, I, I love my Panthers. And uh, it's been a rough season, though. I will say that. I um, anticipated some lumps. I, I don't think there's any doubt. I thought we could be a six, seven win team. Um, because we gave up an asset, a major asset, DJ Moore and to acquire Bryce. And I just thought there were going to be some – it's a rookie quarterback. There's going to be some rough going. I mean, that's just inevitable. And um, and certainly it has been. I did not think we'd have all the, um, I guess, the changing of the offensive linemen. It, it's just been – it's pretty insane what we've done at the guard position week in and week out and all the injuries on defense. But that's the NFL. Those things happen. So it's been a um, – been a long season and um you know only one win to show for it so far and and with this division that's really and truly is two years in a row the division's just down it's just not good to be very honest and so um it's uh it's been it's been long but if we could show some growth at the end to, to go into next year and get some more reinforcements we're starting to get some guys back and we'll see what happens i know it's kind of been the same way with new orleans you mentioned the division being down. How surprising is it or unique that a division is like this for a couple of years in a row? It's very surprising, to be quite honest. I, I really and truly, um, if I look back, I know in my mind how I would try to think about it a couple of years ago. You knew Drew was getting toward the end. It was right at the end when Matt Rule took over. And then I knew Atlanta, they were kind of teeter-tottering they could have gone one direction or the other there wasn't going to be a steady stream and then Tom Brady you you just knew it could be at any moment he'd retire um and so I just thought if we just kind of build this thing up um this would be the year that we could really kind of take a step forward but the whole Matt Rule situation really didn't work and you know we uh traded away Christian McCaffrey who um had had some injury issues for a couple of years we know how great he was but there were some injury issues and we received some draft capital, and uh, he's in San Fran, and uh, he's looking pretty darn good, to say the least. And then uh, to go all in, to trade up, to get Bryce last year, and um, you knew there were going to be some lumps this year. Speaking of quarterback Bryce Young, how have you seen him handle how things are going there in Carolina? 
better than I would have. I can promise you that. I, um, you know, to one to be the number one overall pick and and to trade everything to to come up to get him and um, you know, really and truly, I'm not so sure um, we have the most weapons offensively uh, around him and just the way he's handled everything because uh, he's taken a beating. Um, I believe he's been sacked a little over 40 something times. And Todd Bowles said it great last week and listening to him preparing for the Tampa game. He said he should have 60 plus sacks. That's how many sacks he has got out, gotten out of many sacks. So it's been, it's been a difficult task for him, but he's handled it great. Um, and if you ever around the kid or see the kid, he doesn't get too high. He doesn't get too low. He's very kind of straight laced. He's brilliant, smart. He's a brilliant processor, but it's still a lot that rookie year in the NFL. And uh, he's handled it great. I know it was pretty tough on him when your head coach gets fired last week, your quarterback coach, um, running back coach. And because when you truly care or you truly understand your surroundings, you you take that personal. You think it's it's you. It's your fault. And you have some guys that they're just naive and they don't get that. But he he truly gets it. And you're just hopeful for someone like him. He doesn't put too much weight of the world on his shoulders. You know, Jake, you mentioned wanting to see some growth from the team down the stretch. Uh, a three point loss to Tampa last week, uh, but overcame an 11 point deficit late in the game. Did, did, was there some growth from that? I know there are no moral victories in the NFL, but. You know, John, there was some, um, you know, the first game with Tabor, I thought we 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 ran the ball pretty good. I thought Chuba Hubbard, I think he had 25 carries for 104 yards. I thought we ran it well. We went under center more. I liked seeing that. I think that gives the defense a little more pause, I guess you could say, when you're under center, whereas if you're in shotgun all the time. Um, you know, I think there was some. Um, but, but here's the thing. We, we take the lead in the third quarter. And then the first play for 10 seconds, we have the lead for 10 seconds. The first play is a, a basically a glance, to a skinny post to Mike, Mike Evans, and he goes 74 yards. And so it just was – and then the following play is a PAT. Brian Burns gets ejected for, for throwing a punch. So in 10 seconds, one, you go down, and two, you lose um, your, probably your second-best player on defense because Derrick Brown is just playing lights out for us this year. Um it, it, so it's just been one thing after after the other, but we battled back. We got the ball back with three minutes left and two timeouts, and unfortunately just couldn't continue the drive to be able to try to tie it and or take the lead. So it's kind of been that way all year long. Um, and going into this week, I know it's the Saints team that they're struggling, and they're going to have a new quarterback, I would assume, this week. Uh, I, I'm assuming Derek w- would be out, um, but a team that's struggling. And, you know, I watched the Saints, John, and it's – I watched the beginning of it against Detroit, and I'm like, well, who is this? And then I watched the second quarter and some of the third. I'm like, well, who is this? It's it's two different teams. It's like a different series. It, it's a team that looks outstanding, and then the next series, it's a team that can't get out of its own way. Yeah, it's been a little bit of a schizophrenic season for us around here. I mean, ups and downs and ups and downs and ups and downs. Uh, Bryce's temperament. Because as you mentioned, he's taken a beating and he's not accustomed to losing games like this. What has his temperament been like? Has he been able to kind of hold it together? He has, John. He's um, I think the one game that I ever sensed frustration in his voice, and this was just from watching interviews, was after the Chicago game uh, on the Thursday night a few weeks back. There was a um, – it, it just looked like – I've never seen him look like truly upset – I mean, it, it looked like, yes, you're hurt after a game, but he always takes all the blame he, and, and he praises his teammates and things like that. He he has everything you look for in a quarterback when it comes to that. Um, but that was the only time I truly saw him, um, like, very upset. Um, but other than that, he, he's handled it great. And that's the thing you worry about, just his psyche and things like that of, you know, will it affect him some but it doesn't it it doesn't seem that way it it really and truly doesn't seem that way is that he's just he gets himself ready gets himself prepared and you know we're just taking these these lumps these bumps whatever you want to call them that's just part of it this year you know he's going to face a Saints defense obviously that's been listing so far this season I mean really kind of been struggling so maybe he'll be able to you know, get getting gear on that one. We hope not here in New Orleans, obviously, but <laughs> the Saints defense has been struggling. What about Carolina's defense has stood out? You you mentioned Derek Brown, you mentioned Brian Burns, but you know, what about Carolina's defense has stood out? 
Well, we've had so many injuries. I think that's the biggest thing. Derek Brown has been the constant week in and week out. He's played every game. He shows up. It's evident. Um, and, and, and here's the thing that I think goes unnoticed sometimes. I know when teams prepare for it, they, they see it. But we've been down in the fourth quarter in every game except one. That's when you that's when you get those sacks. That's when you really can get after a quarterback when a team has to become one dimensional. Teams haven't had to do that um, this year against us. And so Derek's been outstanding. Brian has played well. Brian had an elbow issue um, and a concussion kind of missed one week and he's got a brace on the elbow. But there's flashes when he gets to the quarterback. But again, he doesn't rack up these numbers late in games that you see teams do. But just the injury wise, we lost. Uh, uh, Shaq Thompson against the Saints week two broken leg Monday night football and it's just been one thing after another um, Yitor Gross Matos young defensive end was starting to come on uh, he just came back last week JC Horn we got him back for 32 snaps last week he got hurt in the second quarter of the first game Jeremy Chin just came back from IR Von Bell is one who's been kind of had some injuries in and out so we we've just CJ Henderson he missed time with the concussion a few weeks uh, it's been a battle to say the least. And it's been uh, kind of an influx in the secondary, different guys. And really, John, I'm learning new numbers weekly of like, <laughs> okay, who's up this week? I mean, really and truly that's what it's become. Um, so it, 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 it's just been a battle, but they've really done a good job. I think uh, every, EJ Evero, our defensive coordinator has really done a good job where we're kind of trying to maybe playing things more on a shell type of coverage look and make teams go the long way against us. We haven't given up a ton of big plays. Um, yeah, we have given up some, but it hasn't been a bunch, and our defense has kind of kept us in games. I tell you what, that, that attrition sounds like around here, the COVID year and last year, where we, we just had players rotating in and out, and it was hard to keep up with folks. But, you know, off the field, Jake, how, how difficult is it for a franchise to have in-season coaching changes in back-to-back -back seasons? I, I I know everybody wants to be stable, and that's kind of the antithesis of stability. Yeah, John, I, I I don't know. I don't know how to tell you that. I've never experienced that in my life. I've never had a head coach all the years that I played get fired during the season. And I'm trying to think if I've ever had a coach, just a, anybody like that, get getting fired, be it an assistant coach, whatever it may be, during the season. So, um, listen, the team seems to have a great attitude. I think last year with Matt Rule, you could just kind of sense, especially when they had started one and five or one and four, and it, it just it seemed like uh, this is not going well. I think the Frank deal, no one really expected this. Um, I think no one expected the season to go the way it did. I think there were going to be some, you know, some challenges this season, but um, you know, the owner basically said it. Said it. He he didn't see enough growth uh, on this football team, and so he just he pulled the plug and. We fired uh, Josh McCown, quarterback coach. They fired the running back coach, uh, Deuce Staley. And uh, Jim Caldwell um, is kind of like that. Um, I don't I don't want to say that 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 great uncle, so to speak, or that uncle that, that can bring some calm. And Thomas Brown is back to call in plays. And I thought Thomas did a pretty good job last week. And, you know, Coach Caldwell's maybe a little more influence also. So, we're still learning. I'm still learning Thomas's offense, to be honest. He had a couple of games he called, and Frank takes it back, and then Thomas had it last week. So I, I think we're still trying to find an identity, to be quite honest. How difficult is it for the players then? I mean, you said you're having a hard time kind of keeping up right. with the offense. Yeah, it, it, they don't. And, and talking to them, you know, seeing them the night before the game or morning of the game um, and listening to interviews, it doesn't seem like they're they're frustrated. And and, and um, I think I know they're putting in work. I don't think I know for a fact the towel hasn't been waived. That That's something that I've been told by many people. This team still comes to work. They still work hard and practice hard. I think it's just some that everybody's searching. And if you've been around the NFL long enough, when you don't win two or three games in a row, it feels like an eternity much less winning one so far and you're going into the second week of December, that that's difficult. Um, I've been very lucky. I, I never really and truly had to experience those um, type of seasons. Yeah. Mike did go. We won three games, maybe his last year or whatever it was, but I wasn't around for half of the season. So it wasn't like I was there that, that whole year. So it's, it, it can be difficult. And uh, the team's still working, and, uh, you know, another win would kind of maybe lift up some spirits and try to help finish the season uh, finish the season off in the right way. 
I think we're saying a lot of the same things over here as far as, you know, being on a three game losing streak, the frustration creeping in the fans at the dome over the weekend, but the locker room does still seem like they're, they're sticking together and they're fighting. You can see the way they responded in the, in the lions game. When you were here, you were behind Aaron Brooks and, and he was getting some of that. Um, the, the fans were maybe right. calling for you, for you. How did you handle that situation? Or what was that like? You know, it was easy for me because um, really and truly the social media aspect of it, this, this was back in 2002. Mm-hmm. That was, no, it was none to be very honest. It was none. So, and you're so, I mean, we worked so many hours and I was just kind of, you're oblivious to it. Um, but the whole Aaron situation, it really got rough the last three weeks of the season, to be honest. He had a shoulder injury and we were still there in battling and we needed to win one out of three games to make the playoffs. And we went on a skid and we played a couple of bad football teams. Cincinnati, from what I remember, was one of them. And uh, a word was getting out that he had a shoulder deal. And so, you know, it, it really ended poorly. I, I, should, I don't want to use the word poorly. They were chanting for me to come in in that last game against Carolina uh, because people knew what it meant. If we won, we're in the playoffs. If we didn't, we were out. Carolina had nothing to play for, and everyone knew the shoulder injury was out on Aaron, and I had gone in a couple of times in the, within the month and done okay. So um, that was difficult because as a player, you put all the work in during the week, and I saw the work Aaron put in as a team, and you're just trying to make the playoffs, and it's like you really want to say – Yes, you pay your hard-earned money to come to the game, but like, come on, man, we don't need this. Just stay behind us. Let's try to let's try to get a win. So, really and truly, it happened so late in the season. Um, but it was it was interesting listening to the game Monday night. I try to listen to the TV copy on Monday nights of the team we're playing, and it was evident. You could hear the booing and the cheering when Taysen and Derek and 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 Derek hears that. Uh, any anybody can say what they want. You, you hear that. You feel it. You know it. And uh, it's like they started making a comeback, and then, you know, you get the unfortunate fumble when the guard was pulling, and just kind of it ended there. You know, Jake, two things. First, you you didn't have to. You'll be modest. You played well when you when you stepped in for Aaron. And second, you didn't have to bring up the dick of years because that really, really, um, <laughs> really stings. Um, but but what what have you seen from the Saints defensively? Because this began the season as the strong unit, uh, and we saw some right. of that some of it at Carolina. And lately, it, it just has not been been the unit that we expected to see. Yeah, I think injuries played has played a part in that. You know, the Lattimore. I, I think Lattimore is so good uh, when you have a sh- true shutdown corner, and when he's not there. Um, listen, Alante Taylor has done some good things. Um, you know, Paulson Adebo and Alante. I, I liked him early on. I ran into uh, Jeff Ireland the morning after the uh, uh, the Monday night game, second week of the season at the airport. And I just like the way Alante played. He played the nickel that night. He played outside, and he was tough. He'd come up and fit in the runs. But you've had some safety issues. You've had some linebacker uh, depth issues. So it's just it's hard when you just can't get that rhythm going on defense. And um, it, but they showed flashes last week. That's the thing. I, I watch it, and there's flashes because that's a very good offensive line from Detroit. That's one thing. You know, we can talk about the Ditka years. Is there any correlation between the Matt Patricia years? They drafted well up front with Matt Patricia and them were there. And that's kind of what they're hanging their hat on. And I think Mike Ditka did the same thing, bringing the Jerry Fontenot, the Chris Naoli, the Kyle Turley, having the Willie Rope, and that propelled a couple of good years for Jim Hazlitt. Um, So I think it's just – it's a continuity on defense. And where's the ball hawking? Can you get a turnover somewhere along the way and – um, just kind of get something going. But the run game was pretty evident, you know, trying to stop the run, I guess you could say. And against Atlanta, you know, that pick six, that was deadly. I mean, I, really and truly, the, Saint, the Saints, to me, they beat Atlanta when you watch that game. You know, when you watch the film, I look up after, I'm like, man, how did they really and truly lose that game? What would be the key for both sides to get that win this weekend? Well, I, I think one thing, um, we've got to continue to try to run the ball effectively. And we need – we need some pass game going. I mean, that's, uh, we have, have had a guy, I'm, I'm missing the number right off my head. We have not had many pass plays of 20 yards or more this season. It, it hasn't been much at all. There's been no explosives, but Chuba Hubbard, I think has really done a decent job running the football for us when given the opportunity. So if we could try to establish a run and we can't turn it over, that that's the thing. We've got to limit 
we've got to, I don't want to say almost be perfect, but we got to be pretty darn near, you know, perfect and cause something to happen. But that, that's how the, the Panthers can go in and win somehow, some way and explosive in the past game where that's going to come from. I'm not quite sure. Adam Thielen has been the go-to guy. Teams have done a good job the last two weeks. They're doubling him on third down. Um, and we really haven't had enough consistency outside with any other players. Hayden Hurst was signed. Uh, he's been out with a concussion for weeks now. And just, you know, nothing has really and truly taken off. And and trying to create a turnover. I think that's something that we've had, we've played so soft defensively because there were new guys weekly just coming in, coming in. And so we haven't had uh, some attacking on defense where you can possibly get a turnover. Um and it's going to be the same thing with the Saints this weekend. What can they do to the rookie quarterback? Can they rattle him? Can they hit him? Can they cause a turnover? Can they stop the run, make the Panthers one-dimensional? And with, with Jameis, I'm assuming Jameis will be the guy this week. He has a propensity to turn the ball over. Now, he can kill you with some deep passes and, and go down down the field on you, but can the Panthers come up with a ball here or there? And is there a, a fumbled snap? We saw two a couple of them last week in that game. So – it's just limiting the turnovers or just the self-inflicted wounds that, that really kill football teams. Mm -hmm. Earlier, you mentioned when you were going through the, the quarterback stuff, it was before social media with social media being such a big, you know, I, I don't know, just it's everywhere and anybody can say anything. How much pressure is on a modern quarterback or how different is it for, for players now? You know, I go back to, okay, so my last year was 2011. And um, it's just now, like, NFL Network was just starting to come about toward the end of my career. I mean, it was fledgling, to say the least. And now, every day, and then I just look at the quarterbacks, there's so many times they have to meet with the media. And now the assistant coaches uh, and the coordinators they're meeting. Like, I don't ever remember Dan Henning, who was our offensive coordinator, I don't ever remember seeing him in front of a podium. I don't ever remember that. So it's just, there's just so much access and the game is so popular. Direct correlation with the salary and the salary cap, uh, which is great uh, for the players now, but it, it's just different. And I, you just hope guys, you got to shut it off really and truly. And you can say, Oh, how do you do that? You're going to know by the line of questioning you're getting uh, that week, either on a conference call with the opposing team or your own media, you're going to know the line of questioning, what's being said. But you got to, to me, you've got to cut off the social media access and things like that. You can't lim you can't let that kind of come in. I don't, first of all, I don't know how you have the time to do it during the week, but you can't let that creep in. And certain, certain guys love it and fans love it and I get it. But man, that would be, um, it would be, it would be difficult. And I'm glad. I know for a fact if I was playing now, I wouldn't have a, much of that because, one, I wouldn't have the time. But, two, that just kind of wasn't my thing, so to speak. But you just do you, – you get it by the line of questioning um, that, that you get. And, listen, in Derek's case, he's getting it by the booze that he hears when he's, when he's in the Superdome. It probably feels better for him when he goes on the road, to be very honest. I got booed my last year in Charlotte because I was terrible. They should have booed me. But you do hear it, and you feel terrible because you're not playing well for your team. Yeah, it's interesting that you bring up the line of questioning because a lot of players will say, well, I'm on I'm not on social media. I don't know what's being said, but I guess they can glean a little bit off of the questions that they're getting. Yeah, you have to be self-aware. I mean, you have to know. And if you're honest when you're with yourself, when you're watching film, you're going to know, hey, I got to play better. I'm missing things and stuff like that. And, you know, certain times there's, hey, somebody might be open, might not be open. Um, we should have done this or that. But you know, to truly know the whole story. What's the read? Did the guy run the right depth? But you just have to be a bigger person sometimes and swallow hard. Yeah. I mean, I'm assuming these players know exactly what they need to do better. I mean, that's what they spend all week on. So regardless of what's being said about them, I, I know they're very aware and, you know, putting the work in as much as they can during the week. So we appreciate you coming on and giving us all the insight from your time playing and from being there with the Panthers this season. Well, I appreciate it. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can have a good football game. This It's crazy to think the NFC South is still so wide open. You know, if Tampa can beat Atlanta, which is certainly doable and, you know, it depends on what happens this weekend. You know, the Saints, every, they're still in it. We're officially eliminated. I don't think there's any question about that. Um, but, you know, it's still wide open and uh, still a lot to play for. So hopefully a good game.
Yeah, well, the Panthers can play spoiler, though. They can they can do that. They can have an effect on things. No doubt, no doubt. All right, thanks, Jake. Thank you. Appreciate Jake for the insight. This one is a 12 o'clock kick at the Superdome. It'll be broadcast on Fox if you can't make it out. Our pregame show starts at 11 on NewOrleansSaints.com, where we'll be bringing you the latest news heading into the game against the Panthers. Thanks for tuning in today. Have a great weekend, and go Saints. Thanks for listening to the New Orleans Saints podcast. Join us three times per week on NewOrleansSaints.com, the Saints mobile app, or you can download the podcast on iTunes. We'll see you next time right here on the New Orleans Saints podcast.